Okay, so the first question is, how to keep your legs still when you ride on the flat? Uh, I was going to say, I think uh, number one is is um, lots of two-point because that gets your center over your leg, which helps keep your legs still and helps keep you from clenching with your knee, which will make that lower leg swing. I think working without stirrups, especially at the sitting trot, you know, to get a nice connected position that's following the horse and going with the horse. Because a lot of times if we're riding against the horse, that's when things start bouncing and moving around. Yeah. So when, when I think of how to keep your legs still when you ride on the flat, what I think of is, is like totally position and why, why do your legs move? And I think there's a couple reasons why one is that you're pinching with your knees, right? When you pinch with your knees, if you're gripping with your knees, your lower leg swings back when you do your rising trot, or if you're in two point, or if you're cantering, uh, you know, if you're pinching with your knees, your leg is going to be swinging. So what are some exercises we can do to help prevent that? How to stop pinching with your knees? I think, again, the, the sitting trot, lots of sitting trots, sitting trot without stirrups, because I think it, it gives you the feeling of getting your whole leg on your horse, um, which sometimes people are worried to do at the canter because they think they're going to make their horse fast. But all horses need a supportive leg, may not be a driving leg, but a supportive leg. And I think working a lot on the sitting trot with and without stirrups helps give you that. Yeah. What about, totally. what about you? You have some ideas for exercises, I know. Yeah. So the lower leg, uh, uh, I mean, keep your legs still. I, when I think of, you know, if, you're, if your leg is moving, it's because your seat isn't independent. Mm -hmm. And um, I like the two-point idea. I like the uh, working without stirrups. But I, I think I'd even like to go back even further than that and start doing some work on a lunge line. If you have mm -hmm. somebody, you know, we I, we didn't even talk about this before, is, is the, the lunge work. Right. Do the, the old-time exercises of work without stirrups on a lunge line where somebody else is you know, on, you're on a quiet, relaxed horse who you can just relax on and sit on and focus on your position. Mm -hmm. And somebody else is controlling that horse for you. So you can do exercises and make your seat independent of the rest of your body. Mm -hmm. uh, things like uh, yeah. lifting your left leg off the saddle back on, lifting your right leg back uh, off and on, lifting both legs off and on at you know off and on or even reaching forward touching your horse's ears reaching back touching the horse's tail touching your toes those all those exercises really really help to improve your independent seat and and balance in general balance in general and i i like one one thing i like is when you're sitting put one hand in on the pommel of the saddle and the other on the cantle and and open your thigh a little bit and feel those seat bones, not driving into the saddle, but settling a little into your saddle because your seat bones are your base of support. And even when you're in a two point, they've got to be close to the saddle and in the right place. Exactly. Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a really good one. And that's a simple one that you can do right now, really. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and, and and along with that one as well is take the palm of your hand and put it on your lower back oh. so that you can feel your back moving mm -hmm. and you can feel that. So that helps to get your seat independent. Now, the question was how to keep your legs still when you're riding on the flat. And we're, we're, we're not saying keep your legs still. We're giving you exercises that's going to help you make your seat and leg and upper body independent. So that will get your lower leg still when you're riding. Right. Make sure your stirrups are the correct length. Yeah. You know, yeah. I like them to hit right at the ankle bone. Depending on your horse, if your horse is a very wide horse, you might need them a touch longer. If it's a very narrow horse, you might need you a touch shorter. I generally, any, anything above novice riders, I have them ride a hole longer in their flat work. 
that I do when they jump. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And I think too, uh, along the same sort of line is to develop that spring in your joints, your, your hip joint, your knee joint, your ankle joint, they have to be like springs and supple and relaxed so that they can absorb the motion of the horse while you're riding. Mm -hmm. If you're tense in your hip, tense in your knee and tense in your ankle, that is also going to prevent you from becoming part of the horse and staying still with your leg. Exactly. Yep. Good points. The leg being still generally is the byproduct of a larger problem. You know, either you're pinching with your knee or your seat is not independent or your lower leg isn't stable and underneath you, you know, there's, there it's it's not just the leg being still it's usually related to something yeah. in your the position. leg moving is a symptom of something else that's happening in your body yes yeah reminds me of the the poles we're thinking of two point position going over poles mm -hmm. this will help get that spring in your knee and your ankle and your seat all those exercises um to help trotting your poles in the sitting trot is a good one because the horse is going to get a little suspension as they trot over the poles and your seat has to be relaxed in your center of balance in the right place, not to get jostled around. Jostling. That's a good word. Jostling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So then the, to, this, the final thing about this is, um, Oh, I was going to say something about uh, if you're doing your sitting trot, uh, do you think you should start with your sitting trot? Or what do you think if your leg is moving, what would be the first exercise that you would do? If somebody came to you in a lesson and said, Patricia, how do I keep my leg still when you ride on the flat? What would be the first exercise you would do with them? Probably sitting trot. Because I want to get, you know, it's easier to get those angles the way they need to be when you're sitting on the horse as opposed to breaking that up with the posting. And then I think a lot of times at the canter, people are just so worried about staying with the horse and keeping the horse where they need to be that they don't, you know, often concentrate on their position quite as much as they could at, say, a sitting trot. And would you get them to hold on to the saddle or... Um, what would you do? It depends on the rider's level. You know, I'd rather, rather than holding onto the saddle, I'd rather use a neck strap okay. or um, grab a little piece of mane. But you've got to start where you can do it. You know, if you're doing it at the walk, um, start at the walk. Make sure your hands are independent of your seat at the walk. And then start with the sitting trot. Make sure that your horse can do a gait that's comfortable for you to sit. You know, that's like something. Slow, joggy type on. thing. Yes, yes. And then go to trot in your poles. You know, don't don't just pick up a trot, trot over some poles and expect it to um, be, uh, be successful. So Anne-Marie says, I love the exercise, which forces the weight in the heel in the stirrups, helps squats, which was shared on another episode, Make, makes you more aware of the feeling and helps your position your seat. Yeah, excellent. Thank you so much, Anne-Marie. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. So yeah. So that, that, that's true. It's the same muscles that you use in a squat because you're, you're keeping your knee relaxed and your thigh and your lower leg are supporting your body. So it's And when you think important. about squatting, you are closing your hip angle, your knee angle, and your ankle angle, which are those shock absorbers that you need to need to help mm -hmm. keep you your leg still. Mm -hmm. So for me, if I had if someone says I can't keep my leg still, what I would put them on the lunge line and make them do exercises and exercises and exercises. Mm -hmm. I would back up the bus right up to the beginning. That's what I would do. Mm -hmm. So watch out. <laughs>